who here has heard of or used the Python? Anyone? No one? Oh, wow. Oh, awesome. Okay, There's, this is going to be fun. So, um, vPython kind of came, I came across it after using the basic Python REPL for, for a while and kind of running into these problems again and again of um, just how, while it's powerful, it's very basic. Um, you, I found I quickly hit the limitations and just got tired of, you know, continually retyping the same things. Um, and yeah, came across vPython one time, and so let's, let's start this guy up here. He's not a, um, it is not a interpreter on its own. All it really does is wrap the, the whichever Python interpreter you want to use. So in this case, this one is wrapping Python, a Python 3.3 interpreter that I just installed from python.org. Um, and it's a very, very lightweight wrapper. And it's uh, made up of basically pigments and um, a few other little pieces of, of code. It uses um, the in internal tools that Python supplies for itself to get to get into itself and do a bunch of introspection so you can do a bunch of nice stuff. Um, so one thing that pigments provide you on here is syntax highlighting. So you know you can say n equals one and you know that you know n is the name and one is an integer being assigned uh, being assigned to it. Uh, you can also uh, have it spit out words or, uh, or have it hold words. Let me use uh, words. And you can also do actually I'm saying num. Because then you can do other nice things. So beyond beyond syntax highlighting, it also gives you auto completion. So as you start to type the letter N, it set, looks out there and says, "Okay, what in my current context starts with N?" And then as you continue to uh, type, it automatically filters down the options for you. Um, so you know that you know num is the only thing that this could be completed with. So you know, there, there you go. Same thing with you know w o words. Good to go. It also does some very other uh, other nice stuff, and I kind of found a lot of this stuff just by hitting tab constantly in this. In this, I'm just like very impatient, being like, just auto complete for me already. Come on. <laughs> um, so things like it knows about fancy um, fancy Python stuff or Python specific stuff, like the import. So it knows that import. You can't import every single name in your namespace. So what you can do is starts. It, it knows to be smart about it and start looking for things that when I type sq. It'll start to look for things that begin with SQ. It doesn't do fuzzy matching, it just does start of start of character matching. So it, it knows that I can't import, um, you know, import many other things, but then it knows it knows what it can import. It also knows uh, for the imports to look on your path appropriately. So in the current my current working directory, I have something called SQL underscore helpers. So you notice as I start to type import. SQL underscore, and it shows me SQL underscore helpers. It, it just back and finds my current directory, shows me what's there. It knows that it's something that's um, that's at least importable by. Uh, it looks like it looks like a proper other package with a dunder in it, or it looks like a .py file, or .pyc file, .io file. <coughs> as well, um, it has nice. So it has nice tab completion. So see, I type I am. I can hit tab. It will pop over and do a nice tab. Same thing with like SQL helpers. It gives me that. It gives me that nice ability. Um, as well for tab completion, say you type letter letter R of this. As you tab, you can work through the selections that it has given you. And if you um, if you overshoot, you do Shift Tab, and it pulls you back. So it's a very nice little you know quick way. I find I type maybe two three characters for each symbol, and I can have very nice strong expressive names for everything I'm building. Um, and then I go back to the standard Python REPL and I'm back to my regular poor typing ability. So, <laughs> um, oh, as well, here's a, here's a really fun thing that I, I like. Um, so, you know, you do the SQL like three, and remember I said it, it auto completes in the current context you're in. So, if you type the period here, it will go, it will introspect the module that you're working with, and it'll give you a, a full list of names for you to work with. Um, so, I can start typing SQL like connect, like that. And then here's, here's the really, really cool thing that I use constantly. Once I've chosen connect, and I know it's, it's a method, I open the brace here. Oop. Maybe the screen is too small for this, for the show. Hang on a sec here. Oh, wait, okay, I know what's going on. Here we go. The size of my window is too small, so I'm gonna 
for too large. So let me go like that. Go to SQLite 3, SQLite 3 dot, let's say connect, open it. It goes, it looks at the doc strings that are in the module there and will show you all the things you need to fill in. This is awesome when I'm exploring a new, um, uh, a new module that I don't, that I, I don't want to keep on popping back over the documentation. I don't want to do that context switch between my terminal and uh, the web page or going to a search. This will do its, its best job to find, I believe, doc strings and uh, there's one or two other ways that it goes about finding. It has a preference order of finding documentation in here, but it's, it, so far for me it's been very good. And worst case scenario, it gives you uh, the, the function or method signature for what you're working with. <coughs> and this is also really useful if I do Helpers, SQL helpers dot function where let's say my default arguments here, so I can show which ones um, may have even like yeah, default optional uh, or optional arguments for me to for me to fill in. As well, if you um, are working with this, you can so this one just shows the regularly exported um, not non private names. Um, and we know in Python that everything is a you know consenting adults language. Um, so if you hit underscore on here, it will actually show you all the hidden, hidden ones that you can access on this, uh, on this method, variable, whichever. Uh, so I have like a hidden function here. And I open that up and it shows me what my internal, um, internal functions are. Very, very, very useful. Let's see here. Oh, here, here's a fun one too. Um, so I find, you know, if I'm, if I'm testing this out, this is, just like with the REPL, this isn't my regular development environment. Um, this is for doing something quick or trying something out, and sometimes I don't have all, all of the stuff set up around it. So if I need to open, um, so it knows, this is the other fancy Python stuff, that if I'm opening something, I have something in, in my current directory called some file. And it will know to look at that the open command is going to deal with files, and then it will start looking down on disks to try to find stuff. And I have some file one and some file two, and then As well, you can open and it understands the full path stuff. So I can walk through my home directory. It expands that and then shows me the completions that are possible in my home directory. And I can drop down and down and down and just really experiment with stuff right off the, right off the bat. <coughs> as well, it has a very, um, it's very good about auto indentation. So, so for I in, you know, range of five, when I hit enter, it knows that I'm suddenly in a for loop, and then all the things that I add on from there, it will keep on indenting me at the, at the appropriate level until I hit enter. Um, then it'll give me the same you know, prompt, enter again, and it runs through there. I should probably put a print statement showed up to execute. But yeah. As well, you can do, uh, it has nice brace mapping. So you can say, you know, A equals, and then you can hit a whole bunch of these across here. And it'll use cursors to, to show you which brace you're closing so you can get proper matching as you walk your way back up. So you know you've closed everything out um, when you're working through. Let's see here. Okay, so you know, let me just grab that instead of trying to type everything out. Um, so I put some stuff in here. It's a try accept block where I'm printing out some text in addition to doing a, a pass there. Um, with a comment about runtime error and so on and so on. What I can do then is I can, uh, just like in the shell, you can walk back up in your history exactly as it came out here. So I can say try, you know, print some text. Now say I wanted to raise that runtime error, I can run that there, and I can keep on walking up. Now what it does, um, so say I'm, at, say I'm at this level here. Um, Level here, and I start moving up. The auto completions is only giving me auto completions for that level of index. So it's not giving me the tries and the accepts that are outside of this current um, for loop scope. <coughs> As well, it'll also give you only give you completions within that scope. So if I type um, PASS or, uh, or PR and then I try to roll through here, this is only going to show me what's in the what are print statements or things that start with PR in the current scope of my for loop. Very useful for dealing with, for quickly ad hocking out some functions and uh, messing around with stuff. Let's see, let's end off that one there. As
as well. So another very useful one is, say you're defining a function. Um, say I want to return, uh, I'm sorry, print, mm, what do I want? Oh, no, I actually want to return the length of A. Return length of A. So here, Python will happily let you do this. And then when you try to run it, you'll find out that you forgot to define A in the function call, and it's, there's no A defined anywhere. So what you can do is, you know, so the bottom here it says control R to rewind. It has stored all of the commands that have been entered in the current ePython shell and stack, and it's going to pop back up and re-execute them all and let you rewind out of that to help you redefine the F or redefine uh, a var variable you put inside your class. It's, you don't want to use this with things that are mutable, like if you are writing files on disk, it is going to you know, reopen and rewrite whatever you wrote in your session there, but for quickly defining classes, um, methods, functions, it's a very good way to, to hash it all out. <coughs> As well, when you're all done your, uh, your session here, you can actually save everything to case bin. So you know, you hit function F8, and you have case bin buffer, here. And then everything from my session is now spit out in a nicely syntaxed highlighted thing uh, on, on paste it. As well, you can also save it to a file. Uh, it just tells you which file you want to save it to. It gives you nice, uh, nice clear uh, beginning line markers saying these are your outputs. So you can just do a search or replace where all lines start with out and you've got just your Python code that you care about there. Um, and as well, when you exit, you know, control V to exit out, it echoes everything from your session back out to your standard out of your shell. So this is, this is bpython. Um, I use it on a very daily basis. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys do too. So it's so there's a few things. So if we um, say imports blue exploit dot connect, say we called help on this, this should match up with the documentation that was displayed here. Um, so you notice how we had connect, you know, connect to a database, so on, so on, so on. This should be what comes up if this or something similar to it, very similar to it, should be what comes up when we do blue dot connect like that. Yeah. So this uses the same doc string. So each, um, each Python function module um, can, can have a dunder doc method, I believe, on it, or dunder doc attribute to it. And so it, it looks that in there preferentially, sees that that's populated, and then, sh then shows that to you to help, it, uh, help you out. Yeah, just on the first line, I'm seeing the, the parameters across the top. I'm wondering, is, um, like, the, the doc string starts in the darker blue below yeah. with the parameters showing up with the parameters that may be using the introspect module. Um, yeah, it uses Python's own machinery and just turns it back on itself. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's also very easy to uh, install. Uh, when I do these things here, I just say, uh, it's part of my post make virtual end step is to pip install bpython. It's <laughs> very useful, very, very useful.
where you're where you're messing around with stuff, that will still be, you know, if you're if you're adding three more elements to a list and you rewind, each step you rewind is gonna replay the whole stack that adds those three elements to that list. And if you don't initialize that list in your um, in your uh, in your regular course, like if you don't say this list equals empty braces, every time you re you do this, it's gonna add three more elements to your list, and that list is gonna go very long. Or the file on disk is gonna have a whole bunch more stuff on there that you weren't expecting. So, so I guess it's really just a short metaphor. Like if you define for some whatever reason in the shell, if you define a pretty long class, and you realize you made a mistake at the beginning, you could use a history to scroll back and re-enter all those commands that were previous. Yeah. So you rewind and step like back into the middle of the class. You'll still remember all of the It's yeah, yeah. It's if you're doing work on the on the Python. Uh, if you normally would call Python, mm -hmm. you can now just call B Python. Okay. Um, and in fact, I, I find when I'm executing things, I will, if I'm wanting to stop my program at a certain step and then start doing a bit more work inside there, I'll call it with B Python because then I get all the nice highlighting and, and, and auto completion and, and all that jazz. Um, and any B Python takes very few arguments, so. Um, And basically anything that it doesn't know about is gonna be passed down to the underlying interpreter. So it's really just a very thin veneer over top of the basic Python interpreter. So this is more general Python beginner question. Yep. Uh, normally when do you find yourself using the console or BPython? When would you? Yeah. Um, when I'm, like say if, uh, if I'm playing with a new library, say I want to, um, uh, or say I need to start up I actually have been using it recently, like starting up a Django server and popping it into a console so I can modify some parameters within the Django application or web app I'm building. Um, I use it for, if sometimes I'm playing around with getting out to a certain website and I don't know uh, how badly or weirdly malformed the JSON is coming back or how I have to set up the request structure in order to get back the data that I want. Um, anytime when I'm interacting with something that I don't know exactly how it's gonna go, I generally use the um, I also use it for experimenting with possible ways of solving a problem. Um, so if I know I, I, I you know, if I know I, I'm, I, I have certain function definition, I know I need to hand it up this way, I will start like giving it some little bits of test data and playing with it in BPython to get an initial part to the solution. And then when that's working, I can copy and paste that into my real editor and keep going. Um, it's the, the auto completion is really for times when I don't when I don't fully know the library I'm working with, or when I'm hitting a part where I don't know exactly how I want to solve a problem. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs>